Hello, good to be here once again and talk to you about prayer and about the power of prayer. In fact, I, I want to talk about following the plan and the pattern that God has given for effectual intercessory prayer. Following the plan and the pattern that God has given for effective and for uh, intercessory prayer. And uh, I call this little, little talk the help uh, of the Holy Spirit. Now, I read this scripture to you uh, last time we, we met, and I'm going to read it again to you. It's uh, Romans 8, uh, 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, now some believe that this groaning that cannot be uttered is just simply speaking in tongues. And uh, whereas I believe that, that is very possible, after all, the Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. So when you speak in tongues, you're, you, you're speaking to God, you're edifying yourself, the Word of God says, and, uh, and so on and so forth. But other people around you don't understand what it is you're saying. And so that's what the Word of God says, that, that it's an unknown tongue. It is, and some people think that all you have to do is just simply, you know, learn how to or be endued with this, this, this gift that God has given, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and you begin to speak in tongues. And so all you have to do is speak in tongues. And people take that scripture that I've read to you found in Romans 8, 26, uh, and that groaning that cannot be uttered as, well, you're just speaking in tongues. Uh, these groanings are, I believe, much more than talking to God, although, although that in itself is a fantastic miracle that you and I are able to talk with eternal God, God who said, let there be, and it was. The Word of God says that He, he spoke into existence. He created things just by speaking it into existence. And this is the God that you and I have the privilege of going to any time, any time, day or night. There's, there's no office hours for God. You, you, it can be three in the morning and you can, you can talk with God. It can be three in the afternoon and you can still talk with God. His office is open for business any day. And, and just think about it. Dwell on the fact that this is an eternal God who knows no beginning or no end, who has, the Word of God says, created the heavens and the earth. And the heavens is is filled with multitudes of stars. And the Word of God says that He has named every one of them. This is the God that you and I get to speak to. So this is the privilege. So it's a miracle in itself that we can do that. But it's more than just speaking in tongues in His presence. You know, every child of God needs to know this, that uh, we have two divine intercessors working on our behalf. An intercessor is somebody that speaks on your behalf, somebody that intercedes for you. And we have two. First of all, Christ in heaven for the believer. Romans 8, 34 says, Christ that died, that is risen again, who also maketh intercession for us. So Christ is in the presence of God uh, sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for you and I. This is why it's important when you pray. Uh, now, don't misunderstand me. I really believe truly that if you, if you start your prayer and you begin to talk to Christ, you begin to talk to Jesus, and you, you reference Jesus in your prayer, it's perfectly all right to do that. But there is a pattern that God has laid down in, in His Word. And we approach God the Father, first of all, through Christ. 
And it is Christ in actual fact that carries our prayers into the presence of God and speaks on our behalf. He's at our, if you want, he's our lawyer. He's our mouthpiece. He's our interceder in heaven. And so Christ sits at the right hand of God. And so when we approach God, we come first of all in the name of Jesus, asking God to listen to our prayers because we come to him in the name of Christ. Remember that when you're praying, approach God through Christ. And then Christ is our intercessor, but we also have the Holy Spirit as an intercessor with the believers where? On earth, now, while we're here, it's the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us. The Word of God, again, in Romans 8, 26 says, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. It's the Spirit that makes intercession for us. We have two intercessors, Christ sitting in heaven, the right hand of God interceding for the believer, and the Holy Spirit here, now, in this life, interceding for the believer. Wow, two intercessors, imagine that. Uh, note this, with groanings which cannot be uttered. I, I've written here, and I wrote it a lot, I'm looking at some notes that I wrote on this subject some, some years ago, and I, I scribbled in, in pencil, alongside uh, that particular statement, uh, groanings which cannot be uttered. I wrote that not given voice or cannot be expressed. Uh, groanings that cannot be uttered. They're not given voice. They are not, they're not, we're not, they're not easily expressed. I believe that it is, that it is not so much vocabulary as heart yearning. When the word of God says, uh, that the Spirit maketh intercessions with groanings that have not been given voice, that are not easily expressed. He is speaking from this point of view that it's the heart yearning of the, of the child of God who is longing and desiring for this answer to prayer to come to pass. These groanings occur in the hearts of the believers. I wrote that, I think, 25 years ago. These groanings occur in the hearts of, of believers. They are the, the spiritual desires and yearning of the believers, expressed to God by the Holy Spirit. And uh, I, spe I, I spent a little time talking about this last week. There, there's a word in the Welsh language. I have to confess that I do not speak Welsh. I know a little Welsh. Uh, it's my should be my native language, and uh, with a name like Evans, I'm ashamed to tell you that that I don't speak Welsh. It's shame on me. It ought to be so. It's a beautiful language. I was just explaining to uh, to Chris a moment ago that uh, the Word of God speaking about God, uh, who is is slow to anger. The Word of God says He is slow to anger. In the Welsh Bible, it says God, with shuffling footsteps, arrives late at the place of anger. Hmm. You can see it's a pretty picturesque, poetic language. It's beautiful language. There's a word in the Welsh language, hiraith. It's on the screen for you to see. Hiraith. It means longing. It means a deep sorrow that nothing can satisfy or eradicate. It, it, it's this, it's this yearning, this homesickness. There's a song that they sing in rugby matches, the, 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 the crowd, when people were able to gather in stadiums and watch rugby matches or watch a soccer game. And uh, if they're a Welsh uh, team, you can guarantee the the, the Welsh will begin to sing, uh, we'll keep a welcome in the hillside, we'll keep a welcome in the vale. This land you knew will soon be singing when you come home again to Wales. Uh, we'll kiss away each hour of eraith, with, with uh, the kiss away each hour of longing, uh, homesickness, desire to, to be once again home in your homeland. And uh, uh, this is what it means. 
You know, I believe that we need to pray. We need to pray that God will give us hiraith, that God will give us a heart that when we pray for the lost, we literally weep for them. We cry for them. It was, uh, it was in our prayer meeting this morning when the men gather on Tuesday mornings for prayer. Uh, one of our pastors prayed for a young man who is going to have to have some medical tests and apparently they're pretty frightening, but uh, he was asking that God would minister to him and bless him and, and, uh, and uh, give him strength at this time and so on and so forth. And as he began to pour out his heart, his voice broke and I could, I could hear the sob in his voice as he prayed for this young man. Uh, and, and I realized that what I was going to be speaking about this morning was being fulfilled right there. It was a hiraith. It was a longing, a yearning that God would answer this prayer, not just, you know, praying it. Uh, you know, see, I, I don't believe for a moment that God ignores us when we rush into his presence hurriedly and, and say, oh God, help us now. We need this uh, to be answered and so forth. And you have no time, as it were, to prepare your heart to approach God. You, I call them o -E -O 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 I know, SOS prayers. Uh, SOS prayers uh, means, you know, prayers that you, you, you give uh, quickly and hurriedly. I don't think God turns us away at that time. Of course he doesn't. He's a merciful God, a loving God. But I really truly believe that uh, as we approach, I believe that prayer must be, must be a deliberate act of our determination, devotion, and desire. There's got to come that place where we say, I desire to do this. I, I long to do it. I want to do it. I, I yearn to come closer to the heart of God and pray for the lost, for my neighbor next door, for the guy across the street. God, bring him unto yourself. For that person that's going through uh, surgery, that person that's just been told that they've got cancer and it's terminal. God, and you pray with an earnestness in your soul. I heard it today. I heard it in the voice of one of our pastors as he prayed for a young man that is going through a hard and difficult time. You see, uh, prayer must be more than just reciting a list of names or requests in God's ear. And uh, prayer is, is supposed to be a time of, of intimacy with God. So I want you to start thinking about prayer in this way, not just, you know, having a list. People say sometimes, uh, you know, I, I, I go through a list of, of people that I prayed for. And sometimes it's, oh, it's God bless this one and God bless that one and God touch this one and God bless. And it's just, can I say it? We sometimes, you know, ridicule the Catholics for, for using their rosary bead as they go through the beads and they pray their prayers. But we Pentecostals and we Evangelicals are just guilty sometimes. We just, we just touch on somebody's name and we, we, we pass it along and we, we, we excuse it as being prayer. But that's not really prayer. That's just a list of names. Uh, we need to sometimes concentrate on one or two of these names and one or two of these people. And as the old fashioned people used to say, the old times used to say, praying it through until it happens, until it comes to pass. And so I believe with all my heart, we, you know, Psalm 31 says this, Psalm 34 verse one says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It's a continual thing. It's an ongoing thing. And uh, give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. This was David in Psalm 55, verse 1. He was saying, God, uh, don't turn your back upon me or, or don't hide your face from me. God, listen to my, my prayer. Listen to my pleading. This is intercessory prayer. This is effectual prayer. This is prayer that gets something done. And so I want to lead you, if I can, as your old senior pastor, I want to lead you back into the place where 
prayer becomes a desire in your own heart that you long to set aside time to come in the presence of God and talk to him about these things and yearn for them. An earite, a earite in your in your in your heart for for to see God answer prayer. Father, I thank you today for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. I thank you for the privilege, Lord, of prayer, for the privilege of being able to come into your presence at any time and talk with you. Eternal, holy God, he that is without sin and, and, and without blemish, and we come before you and you do not turn us away. And David says, hear my supplication. We know, God, that you hear our prayers. So, God, I pray, help us to pray them in, with all the sincerity that we can muster. And I pray, God, you'll bless people today, even now, listening to the sound of my voice. I pray, God, that you'll minister to them, touch them, heal them, restore them, and plant within their hearts a desire for prayer. In Christ's name we ask it and for thy glory. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week.